Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk here. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, climate change and its impacts on water resources of a river basin. Uh, I wish to acknowledge my former student, Anandi, and colleagues, Dr. Srinivas and Dr. Nanjandaya. So I'll be uh, basically focusing on one particular case study where we try to look at uh, climate change impact um, in terms of uh, all the variables that will influence the hydrology of a river basin, and then try to use them in a, a conceptual uh, hydrologic model and see how the stream flow projections are being made into the future for various projected climate change scenarios. I think I don't have to go through all these details about uh, climate change scenarios. You're all very much aware of it. So I try to look at some of these scenarios in uh, specific. And most important is when you have a scenario like this, to get the climate variable information correspond to that scenario, we generally go for GCMs. And when we have this GCM output available to us, one major limitation there is the scale that is already mentioned by Professor Muzumdar, that what we require uh, for hydrology is at a very fine spatial resolution when compared to what is available. Generally, GCMs are available at, a, or GCM output is available at approximately 300 kilometers to 300 kilometer region, whereas uh, for hydrology, we are preferable to have at 50 kilometer resolution. And if you talk about urban hydrology, we require at much finer spatial resolution. So there is a large gap between uh, GCM output and impact models as far as spatial resolution is concerned. We try to bridge this gap by talking about some kind of downscaling mechanism. And there are many downscaling tools that are available, but I will be focusing more on statistical downscaling because regional downscaling models are RCMs that, are, that could have been made available, but as of now, for our country, we don't have any reliable RCM. So I will we'll be focusing more on um, statistical downscaling. That means basically we try to develop some kind of transfer function between the climate variable that is available at uh, coarser resolution to get the information at a river basin scale. So among the more transfer function approaches that are available that are listed by Professor Muzindar also, uh, one of the ones that we used here is a support vector machine tool, which is uh, pretty elegant and good in representing the nonlinear relationships in a uh, reasonably confident manner. So. Here, what we did is we tried to identify, and you already are aware that the GCMs are not de really doing well as far as precipitation is concerned. So what we try to look at is when we want to talk about precipitation in a river basin scale, we look at the causative variables that will create precipitation or that are responsible for precipitation and look at those variables and use them as predictors as far as our rainfall is concerned. So that's the way we try to identify and to do that we rely heavily on uh, statistical relations in terms of correlation coefficients and try to identify a bunch of predictors which are useful to talk about precipitation in a river basin scale. So what we are using, actually downscaling, we are getting the precipitation, but we are not really using precipitation alone from the GCM. So we are using many causative variables. So just to give you a list, I will show you what are the variables that we have used as far as uh, uh, precipitation is concerned or for any other variable for that matter. But I will just demonstrate this with the help of a case study. Uh, we did this for Malaprabha Basin within Krishna River Basin, and Malaprabha Basin is completely located in Karnataka. And it's about um, uh, 2,564 square kilometers. You can see that this is the, on a GCM scale, you can see that these are the grid points, and the basin is this small, okay? Although it is, that itself is about 2,500 square kilometers. So what we did is, uh, using the GCM output at uh, these locations, we tried to obtain information on many causative variables, that is precipitation, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, wind speed, relative humidity, and solar radiation. For all these variables, we try to obtain the information at a river basin scale on a uh, daily as well as monthly time scale. Now, once we get this data, uh, to get this data, I have shown you that there are so many causative factors. For example, if you look at precipitation, based on the statistical analysis that we have performed, these are the output, these are the GCM output variables which are influenced in the precipitation. So based on these variables that are identified at GCM scale and the, using the GCM output, we try to develop the relation 
to the precipitation at the river, river basin scale. In the same way, these are the variables for maximum and minimum temperature. And these are the variables for wind speed. Uh, due to uh, lack of time, I will not be going into the details of each of these variables. But basically, these are all the variables that are available from GCM output. And so obtain the information at the river basin scale for each of, the river, river, each of these variables that are influencing hydrology of the river basin. Now, let me just show you some details. Uh, what we did is, for each of these variables, we downscaled it for the uh, next 100 years, this information. And that information I tried to show in a, with the uncertainty bands associated in the fashion. This is, a, this is a typical box plot. We will see them in the next five, five slides, many number of such box plots. What you see here is that this is a historical or observed mean and the mean value of the simulations and these are the quantiles. So this is what I try to show in the next few slides. If you look at it, if you talk about relative humidity, the first portion that you are seeing here is basically trying to focus on to get the confidence in the model that we have developed. That means for the past data. So we have the observed data and the corresponding box plot. And this is for the NCEP, NCAR uh, reanalysis data. And this is for the GCM output. So if these boxes are almost at the same level, uh, that means that model, as far as downscaling is concerned, is doing well for the past data. So with that confidence in a model, then we try to use it for various climate change scenarios that are projected like A1, B, A2, B1, and the commit scenarios, and show how the relative humidity is varying in the time. But although this is done for next 100 years, starting from 2001 to 2100, I'm showing it in a 20-year basis in the terms of box plots. Okay. So this is the way that uh, relative humidity is projected to change into the future for A1B scenario, for A2, and so on. And this is for one particular model, CGCM3, which is identified as reasonably doing well as far as that particular basin is concerned. Then this is for uh, rainfall data. And this is for maximum temperature. And this is for minimum temperature and this is for wind speed. Now, all these variables are required for our hydrologic model to run at a daily time scale or at a finer time scale and get the output. But this alone is not sufficient as far as a hydrologic model is concerned because in addition to this information that we are getting, which we have now projected into the next 100 years, we also require the information about to model in a good hydrologic model. So what we require is some information about induced land cover from remote sensing and the drainage pattern from GIS and uh, digital elevation model, and then put them into a good hydrologic model. So what we did is we tried to use uh, a reasonably reliable uh, conceptual model, SWAT, and we tried to use that SWAT model to provide all these inputs to the uh, model and get the output in terms of stream flow projections. So what we did here is that, you know, the, the information from digital elevation model for drainage pattern, the hydrography, and whatever the information that is generated in terms of uh, rain, rainfall, relative humidity, wind speed, etc., are all made available into the uh, SWAT model. And this AV actually stands for RQ, which is a GIS software. So then once this model, uh, we had to look at calibration of the model and provide the inputs for it. And I will just uh, go through the inputs that are provided for the model apart from the hydrology which will be provided afterwards. The land use land cover information is provided from uh, IRS list three data merged with PAN data. And that is as far as uh, land use land cover is concerned. And soil type information is provided again from remote sensing as well as uh, collaborated, collaborated with uh, NBSS and LUP Nagpur uh, maps. Then as far as uh, drainage pattern detection is concerned, we used uh, digital elevation model data from uh, SRTM, Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. And from that we obtained the elevation data for the entire basin. And using this elevation data, we obtained the drainage pattern. And once we obtain the drainage pattern, we can also obtain the pore points or the different places where the flow will come and join here. And from here, the flow has to be routed and things of that kind. And for that, we identify the pore points. And then based on that, we try to divide this basin into number of smaller sub-basins, which are in SWAT called as hydrologic response units. So and it's about five minutes, sir. Yeah. So once we have this, um, HRU is defined, then we can try to model the rainfall into through this basin and get the runoff. Okay? And that runoff that is available observed at this location is used for 
model calibration. And once the model uh, is calibrated reasonably well with all the parameter modifications, etc., then we are reasonably sure that the SWAT model is ready for use as far as this particular basin is concerned. So then we use this with the projections that are made as far as the hydraulic variables are concerned. And then we obtain the future stream flows for various scenarios. And that's projected here. So this is again for the past data and for each of the scenarios that are mentioned, all the hydraulic variables, the six variables that I have shown you, which are obtained by downscaling from GCM output are fed into the SWAT model and the stream flow projections are made here. Actually, you can see as far as this particular basin is concerned, stream flows are projected to increase, uh, which is reasonably a good story as far as that particular basin management is concerned. So this is what we can do as far as impact assessment is concerned in terms of uh, uh, river basin water resource assessment. Once we have this data available with us, then as Professor Muzindar has mentioned, we can as well use this for developing or modifying the reservoir operation rule curves for modeling. As a matter of whatever I have shown here, these stream flow projections are, these stream flows are going into one dam as a reservoir inflows. So that way we can talk about reservoir operation itself. So that's it. Thank you.